arrays. Um, this will be cool. There's a lot we can do with arrays. Some of this is going to be super familiar, and some of it's going to be new. So let's see how we do uh, deal with arrays in JavaScript. First thing, how do we create an empty array? Create an empty array. All right. Um, here's the easiest way. Let's create an, a variable called fruits, and we're going to initialize it to an empty array. An empty array literal is an opening and closing square bracket. So we use square brackets to delineate array literals in JavaScript. Okay. That's different because in Java, we use curly brackets, right? But in JavaScript, curly brackets delineate objects. So we're going to use square brackets to delineate arrays. Just as a reminder, this is the same symbol we used in the JSON that we saw last week. No, you can think of um, arrays in JavaScript like array lists, or even better, like stacks, because um, they really behave a lot more like stacks, like we're going to see. Yeah, but we don't have to say how big we want it or worry about making it bigger or any of that stuff. Um, so if we want an empty array, that's how we do it. If we want to create an array with elements, we do it in a very similar way. We say fruits equals square bracket apple. Um, comma separated, banana, cherry. All right. So that's, other than the square bracket, kind of similar to what we would do in Java. Um, good news, just like Java, arrays in JavaScript are zero indexed, meaning if I do console.log fruits sub one, that's the element at index one. Since apple is at index zero, this should print banana. Okay. Notice when I reference um, an element by index in JavaScript, the syntax is identical to that of Java. We're using square brackets. Okay, so that's good too. Um, as Connor just mentioned, um, Arrays in JavaScript are more like array lists in that elements elements can be added to arrays. Again, unlike Java. So we could say something like fruits, fruit sub three, that'd be the element at index three of which there is none, equals date. And then we can do console.log fruits. And if I run this, it will print out apple, banana, cherry, date. We can see that we added an element to the end of the array at index three. Other similarities. Um, well, this isn't really, I mean, Java isn't exactly consistent in this. So we use dot length to get the number of elements. So it's not size, it's length. More like a string, less like the array list, but that's okay. So we could do console.log fruits.length. And I'll print four. All right. Mostly similar so far. Here's some more differences. In JavaScript, because JavaScript is not strictly typed, Unlike in Java, elements can be of any type. So I can create an array where the first element is a number, the second element is a string, the third element is a Boolean, the fourth element is an object, and the fifth element is another array. Let's log that. Okay. That can be handy sometimes. It can also lead to a mess, but it can be handy sometimes. Um, so if I run this now, we can see how it prints it in JSON, right? 
So we have the square bracket here showing it's an array. The first element, well, it's kind of JSON, it not really JSON ish, never mind. Um, the first element is the number one. We have a string. Here's the Boolean. Here's the object. Here's the array inside of the other array. Yeah, you should. Uh, I don't know. Let's find out. Good question. We have to make it like a fig though for alphabetical reasons. So. Great question. Let's see what happens. Huh. We have an empty item. Interesting. I'm going to log just that item. I'm curious. All right. Let's make a prediction. I don't know the answer. But what will fruit sub four be logged as? <laughs> I'm not. I have, I have a guess, but I'm really not confident. Let's see. It is undefined. Oh, I was right. Yeah. Because undefined means there's nothing there, right? We haven't initialized that. So it is, it is labeled as undefined. I was surprised that this didn't print undefined. That's what I expected. I'm surprised it says one empty item. Um, but this makes more sense to me. So the wonders of JavaScript. Great question. Here, let's uh, add this. This is undefined. Josh. Yeah. Let's confirm, but like, I'm almost certain. Yep, 46 empty items. What happens to what? Length? Uh, it's, it'll be the full length. Yeah, empty items count as items. We can confirm that, but console.log roots.length. Yep. Run. What's that? Mm, I don't know. What organization you mean? I don't know. That's a great question. Someone Google that. What's that? Really? Okay. That's terrifying. All right. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. All right. Oh, they're never going to let me publish this YouTube video now. Okay. Um, all right, excellent, excellent questions. Cool. I'm going to leave this here in the notes because this is really kind of neat to see. Oh, yeah. That makes more sense. Right. And more of a consortium, right? All right, um, where are we at? Let's see, all excellent questions. Elements can be of any type. Ah, okay. So we have just learned about stacks and queues. Arrays in JavaScript have methods like stacks and queues, okay? So this is why we learned like these names because guess what the methods are called in JavaScript? We use dot .push and dot .pop to treat an array like a stack. And when we do so, it's fast, okay? So, if I do fruits.pop, this will remove the last element. And if I do fruits.push, it will add the element to the end. Here, I'm gonna change this around a little bit. That's a lot of stuff. Let's go like 
six undefined seven. There you go. Just when you print stuff, it's not so much. Um, adds the element to the end. So let's log this and actually see what's going on here. So apple, banana, cherry, date, two empty items, elderberry. So we had fig, we popped off fig, and we pushed on elderberry. So the top of our stack is the far right side, um, just like we modeled it in Java, right? So the end of our array list was, was the top of the stack. The end of the array here in JavaScript is the top of the stack. So. All right. How about, what about a queue? We can use dot pop and dot what's called unshift, which is slow, to treat an array like a queue. So if I say fruits.unshift apricot, this will add the element to the head of the queue. What's that? Like the bottom of the stack or whatever? Yeah, but there's like no way to do that with a stack, right? Like with a stack, we're always dealing with the, the top. And then if we do fruits.pop, It's going to remove the last element, which to be clear is the first element added. So let's log this again and make sure this all makes sense. So if we run this one more time, here's what we had, this line of code. We unshifted apricot to the head of the queue we popped elderberry, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. We unshifted apricot to the tail of the queue, right? That's where we put things with a queue. I had that totally backwards. So apricot's at the tail of our queue, the tail is on the left end. The top, of, no, the top, the head of the queue is where elderberry was and we can just use pop like we did with the stack. I prefer NQDQ methods like uh, uh, the Java interface, but we're going to use pop and unshift. So I'm going to clarify this because I definitely got confused by that. Use pop to remove from the head of the queue and unshift slow. to add to the tail of the queue. We can treat an array like a queue. All right, I think these are better notes. Because I definitely got confused by that. Much better, much clearer. So in JavaScript, we don't need um, multiple different ways. We can use an array like a Java array or an array list, perhaps more precisely. We can use a JavaScript array like a stack. We can use a JavaScript array like a queue. Um, we just do all of that stuff with an array. What's up? Not gonna, yeah. The, yeah, JavaScript's in general not gonna be as fast as Java. But for like what we're doing, it's gonna be just fine. Um, another similar thing, there is a for dot 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 of structure as well. So we can say for const fruit, oop, fruit, fruit of fruits. <coughs> this is our enhanced for loop. 
console.log root. So um, more similar to Python than Java, but still we have our enhanced for loop, which makes it really is easy to iterate through the elements of our array. Um, let's run through that just so we can see what it looks like. There we go. Apricot, apple, banana, cherry, date, undefined, undefined. Cool. I think all of this is, hopefully you find all of this to be at least somewhat familiar, a little bit different than Java, but we can make connections to our prior experience um, and make sense of things. We're going we're gonna to depart from that. So here's like the brand new, um, most challenging part for today in terms of arrays. We're going to learn about the map function. Um, the map function invokes the function specified, invokes the specified function, for each element and returns the resulting array. This is very useful. Like I can't overemphasize how useful this, this function is. Very useful for creating an array of objects from an array of values. When I was first learning JavaScript, and in many ways I am still first learning JavaScript, um, I would write my JavaScript like old school Java, and I'd have these long loops to iterate through elements and build up objects and all this stuff, and I'd have like 15 lines of code, and then I'd be shown, no, you use the map function, and it's two lines of code. Um, and it's once you can wrap your head around it, it's so much more efficient. The map function is a lot like recursion in Java. You never have to use it. You could always do it like iteratively unless perhaps like efficiently in terms of code. Um, but once you can like wrap your head around how the map function works, much like wrapping your head around how recursion works, a whole bunch of things get a lot easier, okay? So here's an example. This happens all the time in our web applications. We right now have an array of strings where the value of each element is like the name of the fruit. But we don't want an array of strings. We need an array of objects, okay, for whatever reason. So we want to turn this into an array of objects where each object has a property called name and the value of that property corresponds to the element in the array, okay? We could totally write a for loop to build up all these objects um, and that would certainly work. We can also do it in a single map call. So here we are, how we do it. So we're gonna create a new variable called fruit objects. And we're gonna assign a reference to that variable. That variable is gonna be an array of objects. So on our array of just strings, fruits, we're gonna call the map function. The map function takes one parameter which is a function, okay? So think back to, um, we're gonna do more with functions tomorrow, but we're gonna write a function today. This is, the connection here is our Java Lambda expressions. So we did a little bit of lambdas um, back in chapter 16, maybe, um, and a little bit in 17. So we're doing, this is gonna look like a Lambda in Java. Um, the syntax, to declare, so first of all, if I had a function somewhere else in my cold code, I could totally do this and just like pass it in and be done with it, um, and that's fine. But we're gonna implement the function in between the parentheses here instead. And we do that with the arrow syntax. So there's one parameter item. Here's my arrow. I got a parenthesis, I got a curly bracket on the next line of code here. I'm gonna actually put the code um, name item. So I've got to clean up my parentheses and then I'll talk through this. Do I need one more of these? Yes. All right. 
Let me explain what this map function is doing. Um, or this, so this map function says for every element in fruits, do this thing. And what this thing says is for the value of the element, turn it into the thing after the arrow. Okay, it could be an entire function. In this case, it's an object literal, right? See the open curly bracket here and the close curly bracket here. I'm mapping a value to an object. That object has one property name, and the value of that property name is the value of the parameter item. That's what this single line of code does. And if we log it now, it's like amazing every time like I figure out how to write one of these things. Look, here's my array. Here's each, ob each element is an object. It has the property defined. We got some empty ones, that's fine, no big deal. But we did this in a single line of code instead of like several lines of code with a for loop and all this other stuff. Absolutely. You, yeah, you can do whatever you want, right? Here's an example where we turned it into objects. We could also do, um, uh, let's see. Here, let's do another one. Just off the top of my head, let's do cap fruits. So we're going to map each item and we're going to turn it and make it capitalized. Um, is there, there's a method? Could we do that? Is there like a two uppercase? Look at that. There is. I don't know if this is going to work. We'll find out in a second. So here's an example. We're using the map again. Each value, each element in the array, we're going to map it to the uppercase version of that string. We're going to run this. Look at that. How cool is that? This is so powerful. All right, so we can do lots of different stuff with a map method. Okay. It shows up all the time in our web application code. Oh, we can also, sometimes we go the other way too. Sometimes we have an array of objects, but we really just want an array of values of one of their properties. So we could do something like this too. So we could say, or the other way around. And we could have a line of code that's just console.log, fruitobjects.map. We're gonna map each element in the array of objects. And for each element, we're simply going to map it to the single property name. So if I run this, our final thing will just be printing out the strings, not all the objects, right? So we use map a ton. So, so useful. It will take some practice to get good at using map, okay? But take the, use the same strategy we used with Java lambdas, right? Think of replacing your map call with a for loop where you have an enhanced for loop, an item is your local variable of that enhanced for loop, it's your loop variable. And inside that loop, you are building up element by element a new array where the value of each element in this new array is defined by what's ever after the little arrow. Okay? So in your head for now, until you get comfortable with this, translate it into an enhanced for loop, building up a second array. Because that's all it's really doing. And that will help it make a lot more sense. All right, we're not going to focus on this part, but I just want you to be aware there are other array methods. Here are some that you might find useful. There's methods like splice, slice, and concat. I'm gonna show you where you can find more information on these. Um, these are super useful, I think. They will, might remind you more of Python methods, thinking back to Python. Um, there's also index of, kind of like Java, includes, which is like contains in Java, find and filter. Some of these require um, Lambda expressions as well, arrow functions, 
There's also sort and split and join and reduce, all different ways of manipulating arrays. So many good methods that you can use in JavaScript. What, I've, what I try to do as I'm learning JavaScript is when I start writing code and I'm in a loop and I feel like I'm writing a lot of code to manipulate an array in some way, I stop and I go and read about these methods. And more often than not, I'm like, oh, that's the method I should be using so I can write one line of code instead of 10 lines of code. So that's my recommendation to you. If you find yourself writing a lot of code in a loop dealing with an array, one of these methods probably solves your problem.